Hello, I'm Tim Barnwell, and I'd like to welcome you to the Face of Appalachia. Hey, it's good to be with you again. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful spring. The rotor dinner have kind of peaked, but the mountain laurel is starting to come in, so it makes it one of my favorite times of the year. We've been overwhelmed with the support you have given the channel, and wanted to take a minute to thank you for watching The Face of Appalachia. Subscribing and sharing the channel with others is a great way to support what we're doing here, and will enable us to continue creating interesting new content. Remember, we can't do this without you, and we'd be grateful if you'd share the channel with family and friends. I met Hoy and Christine Coates many years ago at the North Carolina Farmers Market in Asheville, where they ran a booth with his brother and sister-in-law. They have since retired, but his nephews Michael and Myron continue to operate the family business there today. I sat down with Hoy and Christine at their home in Madison County, North Carolina, for a conversation about their lives in the old home place with its large log cabin located on a steep mountain above their current home. Mrs. Coates shares stories of growing up as one of ten children and about men from Ghost Town, a tourist attraction of the time, buying her family's household items for display. Mr. Coates describes growing up on his family farm nearby and what times were like when he was a boy. I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing their fascinating stories. Uh, I'm Christine Bradley Coates, and I grew up right here. I've lived in this area all my life. I've never been very far away, almost inside a home where I was born. And I was born in an old log house where my mom and dad lived, and mom had lived there many years before. And I'm, the, I'm number nine of ten children. And I'm the only one left living right now. And uh, the old log house that I grew up in had a large living room and a long bedroom in the back. And then upstairs, there was a small bedroom with a fireplace in it and a little window that Mama always called her Uncle Lee's room. As long as we lived, it was called Uncle Lee's room, and like I say, on the other side of there was a great big room and a window that would at one time let out on a little porch, but that was many years ago, and then downstairs in the living room, you would go out the door onto a kitchen porch, and our kitchen was separate from the other part of the house, and I guess the kitchen was as big as the living room and bedroom was. And there's a big fireplace in it where Mama used to cook over the fireplace. And one in the living room, it always was a had a big long iron rail above it where you could hang the pots and pans on, cast irons what Mom had. And Daddy always told me about the bread they baked in the oven he said that was the best bread you could ever eat, was oven bread. So when Mama and Daddy got married, it was back when they were, I don't think in this country, they had a wood cook stove. And I think most of what they used was fireplaces. But later on, many years later, they did have a big cook stove in the kitchen. And they had on the wall a machine that you put your coffee beans in and ground to make your coffee. I remember that. And a lot of the things that mom and dad had, when they were building Ghost Town, they all came through this part of the country here and they got about everything. Like one of mama's old beds when I went to Ghost Town, I recognized it because it had been made from wood. And, and in the bottom here, there was little pegs you along the bottom and I remembered when I was little I sat on the floor and turned that and it made a noise so when I went to ghost town and I seen the bed I recognized it like uh, the ovens all the ovens that mom and dad had ghost town got for that and I don't know quite probably the coffee grinder I don't know and uh, most of the things I think that I can remember they got I know my grandma Jenkins, mom's mother, she used to uh, visit the sick. And uh, she had a horse and 
she would ride side saddle when that was before mom was born and after. So I know they got grandma, my grandma's side saddle because I seen it there too. So that's some of the things I know that used to be here that ghost town got. I don't know. I imagine that's all gone from ghost town now. I don't think it's even ghost town anymore. I moved here when I was 13. I used to live over on East Fork. Daddy was renting, and then he bought this. We moved over here, and me and her was neighbors. I met her, met her and we got tangled up together, and we've been together a long time. <laughs> ain't, ain't much to tell about us. We're just old cops here and people. Daddy, he worked on a job. After we got over here and I done the farm and I wasn't a 13 year old, he'd hit me on Saturday. And that was about, about all of them. Went to school and used to walk from way on the head of the mountain. When, when I was little, we lived way on the head of the mountain. We walked off of a mountain, me and my sister down near this uh, Grapevine School, you know, right? used to be down there beside the road. They got a trailer there now. Yeah, we walked off there and back of the evening. And uh, we lived up there until I was about, about five, I guess, and we moved to East Fort. And stayed over until I was 13. That's when we come back over here. Oh, well, Daddy bought a place in Tennessee. And uh, we never did go. I don't know why. And he sold it finally. It's a prettier place than it is around here. That pretty log house on it. Her pole house. The end of the logs was painted. They'd paint them red and the end of them white. And boy, it stood out. But, but we never did go. Mom was 15. And when Mom was barely 16, she married my dad and moved back out into the old house where she'd lived with her great-grandparents. The reason my daddy had it was that his great-grandpa, Joe Bradley, he owned it at that time, and he was living alone, and he was not well. So daddy was 17, and he lived with him and took care of him. He was 21 when he, grandpa died, and he married my mom. And... They lived there all those years. Like I say, I'm number nine to ten children, and we was all born, and most all of us grew up there. Some didn't, but most all of us did. Now, were you born at home, mostly? Oh, yeah. We was all born in that old log house. Back then, no one ever left home to have their babies that I know of. That was, uh, well, actually, back in here, was quite different from what it is now. People just lived on their farms and they just grew what they eat and raised what they, you know, all that. Most of all they had to buy would be lamp oil or flour, and that was about it, you know. The big things, I imagine, because they made everything. They canned everything that, you know, in the spring and fall. In the spring they grew everything and in the fall they canned and put up for the winter everything they grew so they didn't have to, you know, to depend on anything but themselves. And that was most all of these people back in the mountains here. We didn't have a big road, did we, Hoy? Mm -mm. We just had a, didn't have a bridge over the creeks. My nieces and nephews, when I tell them how I grew up, they don't believe one word that I say life. But I tell you, it was a good life. Everybody was the same. Nobody, you know, felt better than anybody else. And when people were sick, they always come and took care of the sick. I can remember back on the, on the top of the mountain up here when, the, when people were sick. I remember my mom and dad and all of the people almost in the community would walk up there and sit up at night to take care of the people that were sick. That's how it was back in the olden days. 
Today's a different world than what it was then. So your dad had a, was it a portable sawmill? Oh no, it was a big sawmill with horses. He had four great big logging horses and he had wagons and <clears throat> he had all the things you take like you would go camping. He had all that that they used. They just camped out wherever he bought a boundary of timber, like so many acres of timber, trees. And they would set the sawmill up there and would stay right there till they got all that cut and took to the sawmill. They did everything. They had to go cut the trees, haul them into the mill, saw them up, and then take them to market wherever wherever they took sold them it. To most to the them. market or wherever. I don't go across the wall, mountain off of Laurel, they bought some of one. He used to tell me about that. He said there was no road. No roads or nothing. Yeah, just a little wagon road. He said, you talk about pulling a load of lumber up a mountain. He said, he rough across that mountain. And he would, like I say, he would stay, usually, he'd leave in the early spring when the crops was all put out and planted. And that was because my brother Everett and my brother Fred, I think Everett was probably pretty young. And they had two old mules. It was so funny. Mac and Sal was their names that he left, you know, that they plowed the fields with and took care of. And my brother Everett, the oldest one, he had a temper. He was quiet, but he, one time he was trying to plow with those two old mules, and one of them just wouldn't move, wouldn't move, you know, when he'd try to get her to, and he walked over, and he said he hit her in the head with his fist and almost broke his fist. It was so <laughs> funny. <laughs> when he told it, he was just a young boy, and he, he just lost his temper with the mules. But they always did all the crops, and Dad'd come back in when it would get, start being real cold weather and all. He'd bring the sawmill and the wagons and the horses and everything back then. Mom said that in the evening then the children would go out. There's a big old rock in the front of the old log house yard and Mom had big lilac bush behind it and she said they would go sit on that rock in the evening and said they would listen and said they could always hear the wheels, the wagons when they'd hit the rocks when Dad was coming home in the fall. So I don't know how often they sat out there, but that was one of the tales she told me that they did. After that, and the Depression come, Daddy never never sawmill away from home log. But he had the sawmill up here, which he did saw for people if they brought their own logs. And Daddy had a corn mill. He, people would bring their corn, and he would, you know, make it into meal and stuff like that. But Daddy got where he couldn't do and just like everybody else all the the farm buildings fell and you know my brothers were not there my sisters all married and moved away and at one time it was just my sister Junior and me at home with mom and dad for years and that's about the way it was I'm proud I live here in the mountains and I would never wanted to live nowhere else used to when I go to work in Buncombe County See, we, that Madison was called Old Bloody Madison. And every time people would say, oh, you're from Old Bloody Madison. Well, I was just proud to be from Madison. I'd rather be from right here as anywhere. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to live nowhere else, really. But I may have to, getting as old as I am. But uh, I've always been proud to, that I lived here. People was always so good to you. And you never locked your doors. You never had to, and you could, everybody visited each other, and if anybody had work to be done and you couldn't do it, they was there to do it. So these old mountain people, they're the best. If you share my interest in the people and places I call home, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to learn more about this way of life. On this channel, I hope to continue to celebrate the people, culture, and rich heritage of Appalachia.